so many people they're always asking me how you how you foil how you learn foiling and most of the people like the biggest thing i always see is they're scared of foiling and actually you don't need to be scared because imagine it's like windsurfing it's not another sport for sure it feels different foiling but it's not that you actually gonna have a completely different sport you still need to be able to read the wind you still stay on the windsurf board as normal but then when you want to learn to windsurf what i always recommend you the biggest difference between normal windsurfing and foiling is you need to imagine when you start planing the foil lifts up your board so it gets super out of control so what's very important put your feet straight into the straps at least into the front strap before you're planing so you go in both straps you stand in both straps and you start planing because as soon as the foil starts lifting up there's no more chance you're going to put your feet in the straps so the most important thing when you try foiling go into the straps from the beginning and you slowly start planing and then the board starts lifting and then it gets very very uncomfortable because the foil board is like super loose so then it gets also important that you you always need to be beware there is a foil underneath of your board and don't be scared of the wings because they're far away and if something happens the most accidents actually are while water starting on the water so always think about you're having sharp wings in the water behind your board and make sure you're not gonna kick them while water starting so it's better to stay safe on the board and stay on the boom because when you're on the boom you're very far away from the from the wings and now the most important thing so you get into your straps you start cruising slow slow, slow not too fast and you better make sure you have enough wind because when you need to pump foiling gonna be hard because while pumping the whole thing gonna be out of out of uh, control so you're in the straps you start planing like a normal windsurf board and then as soon as it gets up make sure you stay above the board and like be aware that the board gonna lift up and control it so that's that's how you get into it and then it's it's a time it's a matter of time to actually figure out a position that you can windsurf foiling like normal windsurfing and it's not uncomfortable but there are a few tips i would love to share with you how wind foiling can be very very easy and one of the most important things i always see like most of the brands they produce their foil imagine there's the the windsurf board here and there's the mass base here and most of the windsurf brands they have this distance here from the base to the foil like on a normal windsurf board and what i can recommend you is when you're learning foiling always put the base as far back as you can that that makes that makes sure that the board actually lifts up more because the most in, like the hardest thing in foiling is when you're standing on the foil and you need to put pressure on your back feet to get actually the board up that's when the foil is very in, in, instable it's much easier to actually have a foil which is lifting you up and you pushing the foil down so i recommend you to get this distance between foil and sail very far to the back that makes it much easier to learn foiling because it's for sure it's going to lift up the board more you have more lift but you can still push the foil down and it's not that you need to push the board up and the foil and then yeah that's what i see the like the biggest difference for me in foiling i'm on a distance like 85 cm from the foil to the to the sail and the normal windsurf board has a distance from the foil to the sail about 1 meter 20 so that's like a, at least 25 cm difference so that's what i very very enjoy when the foil is like the sail is more back and everything is more back and then on the other hand you need to imagine what i'm always trying to do when you stand in the straps i'm watching down my legs like when i'm in the straps i'm watching down and i try to figure out that the wing is somewhere between my legs that's how i reach this possibility to bump the foil that also makes a big difference because like this you can foil in pretty much no wind you you get going with this movement as i said before you go in both straps you're standing in both straps and then you sort of what i'm always doing is i'm in both straps with the sail i do like this round movement like bumping and then with the legs i put the pressure from the back leg to the front leg and i create like a a bump, bumping system to get the lift from the wings.
because it's most of the times when you're foiling it's like today very light wind and in light wind the hard thing in foiling actually is as soon as you get up you're gonna have a lot of wind but to get up you need to work you need to get the, the wing like you need to use the wings instead of using the, the sail for planing Create this lift out of the legs, which is like this movement. There's the next big step, the chipe, because you, you're gonna eventually be at the point where you're like, fuck, I can't actually do a chipe on the foil, because it's completely different again. And then I need to tell you what I recommend everyone, everyone, there are like two options how to do the chipe. One is you slowly go into the chipe, as in normal windsurfing, but you don't try to, to fly through at first point, you try to set down, go back on the water surface, and do a normal type. And now on a normal type, people always go like this. You put your feet like this, you put it out, you do the type. And then as soon as you change the legs, you need to match them. You go now from this side, you change the feet, you go with the back feet out here, you go like this, and then you put your feet here at the front. Stop doing this. Try to reach from one strap straight to the other strap. So you're not gonna lose the control of, uh, of the board. Because you always need to believe the foil is like lifting up this board all the time so you need to keep it down so what I'm doing I never leave the straps while chiving I'm going from this side straight to that side and I'm moving I'm moving my feet from strap to strap which makes it much easier so when you're chiving make sure your feet go straight into the strap And on the other hand also, I recommend you to do the speed chipe. Like you stay in the straps and you go all the way around the chipe and you stay switch stands and you don't even change your feet. Cause like this, you, you're gonna have to control till the end of the chipe and then you change your feet. The easiest version, the speed chipe, you just stay in the strap, go all the way around and then you change. And uh, further I wanna say, it's not harder to do a duck chipe in foiling. It's maybe even easier to do the duck chipe. For sure, if, you, if you're good in duck chipes already. Because it's, I mean, it's hard to do a duck chipe when you don't know how to do the duck chipe. But as soon as you're able to do chipes in, in foiling and duck chipes, it's gonna be much easier. Because you're gonna feel there's always pressure in the sail and it pulls you around. And just don't forget, put your feet from strap to strap. Because that's gonna make it much easier for you. And then on the duck chipe, just put the tail over like this and change the feet straight from strap to strap. If the foils they're actually um, strong enough. Because the problem is you see here, this board is actually a custom construction. It's a serial board from Ambi, it's a custom construction, very very solid. It's like a big piece of PVC performing much much more strength than a normal windsurf board but still it's breaking so often people ask me hey can i use my normal board which i'm using for windsurfing also for foiling of course you can but the problem is there's a big chance that the box is gonna break and um, so i wouldn't recommend you to to uh, to buy a board and then be scared when the box breaks i mean it's no problem i'm always telling if the box breaks you just replace it with a proper foil box and then you're gonna have a board with a very solid, uh, solid uh, box in it. But then there's also like brands. I saw the Nile Pride, the the the, the JP boards. They have the power box, which is a very very interesting system. Because I think, I mean, it would be nice to have one board for all. That's how I'm using it now. This is like my freestyle board I can use for freestyling, for wave riding. 
and as I have a deep turtle box I can also use it for uh, for foiling and this is going to be the future of most of the brands I'm pretty sure so um, we will see but for now on I'm I'm not sure if a power box is too strong enough to actually absorb all the pressure which you have in foiling but we we still gonna figure out foiling is still quite young I mean it's, it's exploding crazy and uh, I just I just I just want to make sure that people don't need to be scared trying it because even the, the even the people which are so scared about foiling as soon as they try it they're gonna figure out it's not that hard as, as long as everything is well set it up and tuned and most of the people they need to it it takes effort to tune your gear you need to start thinking about how you want to actually use the foil the foil gear and it makes totally sense to try to put the sail more back and it makes also totally sense to start trying to windsurf a bit different put the feet straight into the straps while planing and not uh, as normal like have the feet like this and then start slowly planing and then go in the straps you need to you need to adjust your riding style a bit and uh, about foil brands I don't know what I should recommend I have no foil sponsor but I'm also happy with it because like this I can try whatever I want this is a, this is a, I mean, I recommend carbon foils once you want to go in more performance foiling. But also alu foils, they're not bad. I mean, for learning foiling, it makes absolutely sense to also uh, take a cheaper foil you can actually avoid and then take your time to go on the water because it needs time to, to get, get good in it. And uh, in the end, I would say pretty much every foil is solid enough to jump on it. But I, I wouldn't recommend it doing it because you're probably going to break the wings. It's, that's how it is at the moment. But there will be for sure a point in foiling we're going to do all the freestyle moves like we do in normal windsurfing also in foiling. And that's what I'm already now looking for. And of course I'm looking forward to see many many people on the water trying it as well. And yeah, make sure, make sure you, don't need to, you don't need to be too much scared about the wings. They're very sharp and I had an accident with the foil. But it was foil paddle surfing, so in foil paddle surfing you don't have the sail, you're not able to hold onto the sail. So when you crash with the foil, make sure you stay on the boom. That gives you a lot of safety distance to the foil. It's like for sure like two meter distance to the foil. So that's that's very important. And don't forget when you do the water start and you're swimming in the water underneath, you need to avoid kicking the foil wings. Because it's it's dangerous, they're sharp. They need to be sharp, I mean, at the moment. For sure, I hope we're gonna, one day gonna have foils which are, have like plastic edges or something, so they're gonna be softer, which makes it a bit more, less scary. When you crash and you wanna do a water start, that's the problem. You always swim like this. And when you swim like this, you get so close to the wind. So always think about your foil. It's fucking sharp, but I cut myself kicking the foil, which is so annoying. So. If you want to do water start, sometimes I even put my feet on the foil to make sure I know where I'm, where I'm sta staying. Or what I always recommend is just leave this in and pull it up because it's, it's safer than doing the water start in the beginning. Because I know also my dad is also scared of foiling and the first time he tried he jumped off the foil which is very very dangerous, better don't do that. Better stay on the board in the straps and the first try for sure you're gonna make the dolphin and it's gonna be not easy but uh, you will learn it eventually for sure and it makes it just open so many more options to windsurfing you can like last summer I was windsurfing every day at home in Switzerland and the, the years before there was no wind there was like we were standing on the beach with 10 square meter sails bumping on a formula sail and just not going and now with the foil in wind like today it's I think 7 to 10, 15 knots, you're still having a blast and this adds so much more sessions to your, to your, to your windsurfing dream and that's, I mean, you can't complain about that. All right, let's do this. Let's go foiling. You know how to, how to carry the foil, like the safest option, imagine you have shore break and waves. It's scary to get out there. So, like, if there is flat water like here, you can take the foil like this and walk like this, like this, or you put your hand here like this, wrap it like this and then like this. 
that's possible with a small board like this one but if you have a bigger board you better take it like this you put the sail like this you go underneath the board like this and then you hold here on the fuselage and you block it like this you have the mast here and here and then like this it's very stable so even if there are big waves you can easily walk through the shore break and it's uh it's crazy but most of the accidents they have going in the water and out the water because that's when you're in the wave in the shore break so make sure you hold it like this and you enter the water like this like this you have you have the most uh, control and you can also I mean, coming in the same you can get in like this here on the head and then make sure in the short break when you get washed better let the gear go because you don't want to be in the white water with this foil that's how i cut myself i was in the wave getting washed and the wing was like around me and it hit me in the face so you better let it go because it's too it's too dangerous but uh, make sure you're not you're not losing your gear and to get it ready i always put it like this put it like this go underneath here get it on the head like this and then i go out Phew. Advanced. You just stay like this and you carve all the way around. You just keep carving. That's how you start full freestyling. Downwind 360, upwind 360. And they're actually way, way easier on the foil than in normal wind surfing. But it's much easier to keep the speed. And out of those two moves, downwind 360 and upwind 360, you can do all the freestyle moves. And uh, I mean, for me, it's still a challenge to fly all the way around in the, in the air, doing 360, foil 360s. Such a nice feeling. I mean, there's almost, there almost no wind until you, you're flying. The art of balancing in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh.